Hello, Gunner James 105. So Canadian Forces gas mask, or mask NBCD, the uh, nuclear, biological, and chemical defense. So prior to these two, we had what we called our Mark II. So this is a, uh, a C2. This is a C3. Very, very similar. There's not a lot of differences between the two. And so what we had from uh, about, well, we were, we were using these, the LAG or light, light anti-gas mask uh, in uh, World War II. And uh, then we came up with our own in 1944. We call it the Mark II. And so we used that up until about 1960 and then uh, it was replaced. So our Mark II was replaced by these here that went all the way up to 19... I think they were building them till 85, but they, they were still in service till uh, well beyond that. And this is the type that I was issued when I was in. And so um, this uh, particular style or whatever, this, this particular one is, is a British uh, mask that was then reissued to the uh, Danish army. And so uh, it's got the, the marks from the Danish army here. And I believe their designation, or the, it was something like an M45E or M45 is what they, the Danish had designated these. But you still have the British markings. And one of the things, too, our Mark II and, and this particular one here, uh, the rubber is a lot thicker. It's a very uh, sturdy piece. Whether that's, uh, as far as the wearer is concerned, uh, it's probably heavier for sure, but uh, we kept the same style of uh, uh, head brace. This particular one you can see very nicely marked. So it's still got all of its uh, nice markings. There's the, the broad arrow that's, that shows up all over the place. And while I'm holding this here, I just wanted to mention the fact that I, I was uh, trying to figure out what we were issued as far as anti dim and we weren't issued anything. Uh, because of the uh, different in, difference in the design. And you can see that this area down here where your nose and your mouth go is all wide open. Whereas on the, uh, on the, uh, the C2 and C3, they've got that covered up. So your nose and your mouth are, are closed off from your lenses. So, I mean, they did, uh, there was, were times when they might fog up and there was a method to get, get them uh, to def defog. Uh, which I'll explain in a little bit, but that's the main difference is that that's all it took was just to close that off. So Anyways, that's your uh, and I believe too uh, as far as the Canadian versions or Canadian Canadian built uh, Mark II's there was uh, GSW Which was uh, general steel wares and general steel steel wares. I see that marking on Mark II helmets and and uh, uh, metal containers, gas cans, I see it all over the place on a lot of World War II stuff, so GSW uh, built a lot, a lot of items for the Canadians, and then uh, DOM, Dominion Rubber Company, also made them, and so, uh, yeah, that was, the, our, that was our early version, uh, very similar to this, and uh, so then uh, we had, on this one you can see it, and it's probably on the other one as well, so if that shows up for you, there's GTR, and this particular one's got 1985 or 85, and they're showing um, size medium. And so that GTR is General Tire and Rubber Company. And what's different, or one of the things too that's different, is that they only basically had one size fits all. Same for this one, and they called it normal. So on the side of this one here, and you can see the CA. Uh, Canadian uh, Armed Forces, basically uh, 1960, and you can see normal on the side there. And uh, it's been updated with this tape, and that happened in the third month of 1970, so there's been some, some upgrades on this, because like I said, we were using these and the C3 when I was in. Uh, difference too is the, uh, yes, there's a lot, it's a lot more flexible, a lot lighter uh, rubber material. A lot thinner and then there's this uh, very distinguishable flat piece here on the nose so they use the, um, the m69 canister and this one here has got its 
but it's uh, covers on so this is the uh, to seal them up to keep out moisture and to keep dust and whatever uh, out of them so um, normally you're, you're going to just have this in your uh, bag like so uh, not always best to just store these in the bag because they can probably uh, take their uh, uh, the shape then and, and uh, not seal well so and so what what I was looking for when I was going to do this video was anything I had that was related. And so I've got some bags and whatever on the table. So uh, the carriers, there's uh, some other items up there. I'll get to you a little closer in on. Uh, one of the things I, I noticed too, or not noticed, was the fact that uh, um, through my notes, and when I say notes, I had done some research on this, but I had found my old uh, uh, notebook. And this is what I had back at basic training, just just uh, on the subject first. Uh, this one here is introduction to the cold, subarctic uh, and arctic. So we're discussing clothing and, and all that kind of things. And, and uh, on our goes, oh, look at that, characteristic, adequate for weather to minus 80. Well, that would be, uh, that would be very cold. So in here, I found all of my notes for the, uh, the gas mask. And so I was going to read you a little bit of that because it's, it's quite interesting uh, where they're, uh, the first thing that they're talking about here in, in my notes is that these are not good for carbon monoxide, of course, paint fumes, ammonia, and uh, smoke. No, not, not cigarette smoke, but well, that and, and uh, forest fire or whatever else. So these, these aren't going to help you in any of those situations. And I also found out that the C3 is non-magnetic. Got some real heavy-duty magnets here. And that, that there, you can see, is a C2, whereas, it's not sticking to anything on here. Matter of fact, they're right on the lens. So that's that's one of the big differences right there on uh, between the C2 and the C3. So that's in my notes. And uh, as I said, the C3 comes in uh, small, medium, and large. C2, only in what they call normal. And... Uh, they they are mentioning that the C three can C three can be identified by a green tape around the canister mount and the outlet valve assembly. Well, that's a black tape. So just how exact or whatever. I mean, there could be changes along the way, but this one here, being a newer version, doesn't have tape at all. It's got these metal crimped uh, bands. So that's interesting. And one of the notes too, if you're going to wear this, I mean, instructions do say if you're going to put it on or take it off that you, you're not stretching this excessively. So you, you're going to do it in a, in a manner that's not going to stretch these out any more than necessary. And this little valve in here, you want to check and make sure that's there because those can fall out. So if you're going to go uh, on your mission or whatever, you want to check your mask over and make sure everything's good. Uh, you'd want to try it on and, and uh, make sure it's it's sealing well. That's where one of the things with the, uh, uh, I find strange now, I guess maybe the C4, C4 mask that replaced these is a little different design because um, a lot of the guys are wearing beards. So uh, the beards were discouraged in the time I was in because of the fact that you're, you're, you may jeopardize your seal on your mask. So in this particular case, when you put this on, and I know that's in my uh, instruction, you're going to put it on your head and then you're going to cover that hole and breathe in and it should suck the mask real tight to your face. You, you, you know you've got a good seal then. So that's one of the tests you're going to do. So they uh, refer to the black anodized aluminum. And in inside of here we've got uh, particulate paper and carbon. And so they're also mentioning that the lifetime of these canisters... Uh, it depends on the type and uh, concentrations of the gas. And so, you know, that's 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 going to limit them. And uh, the other thing, too, is that uh, they also refer to blood agents. These will only protect you for about 10 minutes. And so, the uh, also, one of the most common areas where these will leak is if you don't have that tightened in. See, I can give that another bit of a turn there. So... You want to make sure that's in good and tight when you're using that. So that's one of the things that's mentioned in the uh, 
in our instruction. So, yeah, you're, you're going to want to make sure everything fits before you go out. You don't just grab a mask. You want to make sure those straps are all tightened uh, to where you need them. And so it's going to protect your uh, facial skin, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, throat from chemical irritants. And, uh, and yeah, so when I talk to you about the, uh, the possibility of fogging up, so there, there's mention here to rid the mask of moisture accumulation, uh, lean forward, blow hard, and moisture will exit the outlet valve. So seems simple enough. And uh, so the, the usual thing, you know, keep away from heat, never store it uh, in your carrier. Um, you're, uh, you don't want to be denting the canister and stretching the straps, as I mentioned. And uh, the, uh, the you know, you're, you want to make sure the moisture is not getting in there and dust in, in your mask or in your uh, filter. And so they also say to clean these, just put it in warm, soapy water, kind of wipe it through. And uh, not not with the canister, of course, and then let it air dry. And so then um, we're gonna go. I was gonna show the uh, no this particular cloth. And I don't know if this is anything special. This was in with one of the masks. Hard to say. Don't know. Can't remember. But uh, some of the things that were issued was this de uh, mitt decontaminating. And uh, it's got your NATO number on there and then the same information in, in French. And then uh, these are two styles. This one seems to have a, a shiny outer edge, whereas this one doesn't. Whether one's newer or not, they, they both got the same stock numbers on them and, and, uh, and, the, and the French and English on there. And they would fit into your... Um, this, this is the this out of the way but this particular one is still attached to all the the web gear so this is an 82 pattern and uh this this style uh was what i was issued so there's um one of the things that's different about it is it's got this piece here where you can put your your name in, in into that behind that plastic and then you would take this and whether you had i can't remember if we had one or two but they, they fit right down in there and along with that, there's uh, pouches inside. So separate separate pouches in there where you would put your, so they, they came in, in these bags. Maybe it's easier to see if I take it out. But that's your uh, chemical agent detector. And so these are, this one happens to be, someone's written some notes there. Um, can't quite make out what that says. Anyways, uh, there's your little gas detection pieces and they'll stick. You can stick those here, there, and wherever. And then if any, if any of them change to these colors, then you know what you're dealing with. So that's, uh, that's where you'd have a couple of those tucked into the, into those pouches. And then on the side, we've got a spot here and then there's three little three um, uh, loops uh, the type of atropine injection devices um, I guess you call them uh, they're in a uh, seret so they, they were more of a round tube by this time a round tube and, and it would be about yay long and they, there'd be three of them there and that's all that uh, pocket was meant to, to hold and so the, the older style, I happen to uh, get this off the internet and uh, just make myself a little little box. And so that would be for the older style. They just had those in the, the side pockets. The side pockets, I'll show you in a minute, a lot smaller than on the 82 pattern. So that's a, just a uh, reproduction atropine inject, injection uh, device, Surrett. And so... Um, Excuse my reach, but I'm of the opinion that this, I don't know where, I picked this up somewhere, but I think that's perhaps an American piece. Usually you can tell when there's no French on it, so we have that. And then this here I picked up recently. So this is a training reactive skin decontamination lotion, so it's a training device, which 
kind of cool. Not many of these kicking around. Store only had one, so I grabbed it. So then, uh, moving this out of the way, I wanted to show you the uh, the two bags. So that's our 82. And uh, this then is the 64. And that material, um, more of a nylon type over there. This one here is like a, a coated plasticky type. It's not really plastic, but it's almost like a webbing. It's got a wax coating or, or some kind of a coating. And the same deal. It's got uh, a couple of those chemical detection uh, books and then in here of course is your uh, spot decontamination mitt and here's where I was uh, I think it's we might even have to go further back to the maybe the 51 yeah because here we've got lots of room in that pocket and then we'd have for the serrets uh, in in these slots here and so like the other style um, I believe I get that back here. It's, it's it's basically the same thing with the Velcro pull tab, so you can have quick and easy access to your gas mask. And then this one the same, so you're going to uh, be able to open that up wide and uh, get that out of there in a hurry. And uh, so the same applies with this one here. It would have had um, these other straps. This here is um, made to go on your belt, and then this here would go. Oops, around your waist, this one, and this one would go around your neck or just uh, over your shoulder with this with this strap. So it gives you all the different ways of managing that bag on your body. And then this one here, which I was uh, quite happy to get, and you can see that uh, 51 pattern um, style of tab. And this here, it doesn't have any any uh, separate loops or anything so you're going to take that there and you'll have three three of those in that pouch and again the same same idea uh, with the chemical paper and then uh, decontamination mitt and uh, this one here has that same type of release and nice these are these are actually a, a very hard uh, I don't know if there's metal in there or what but that's a very definite easy to grab and open and of course with this one here we've got um, we don't have so much of the plastic this is all metal buckles so we've got that we've got our our belt loops belt loops and then uh, of course this one here is again for around the waist so it's it's actually tightened up quite a bit and it it can uh, just hook in there so that's uh, yeah the three the three bags from the um, all the eras that this style of mask would have uh, and the Mark II would have been used in. And uh, before I close out my video, I'm just going to check my. Oh well, yes, I did want to tell you that um, the uh, command was either uh, shouted loudly uh, "gas, gas, gas" or "spray, spray, spray." So the instruction was close your eyes and stop breathing, remove your headgear if you're wearing it and place it between your knees and then you open the pouch with your left hand and remove the mask with your right hand. Then you're going to remove the plugs. So basically uh, plugs, this, this should be already on your mask. You're going to remove uh, this plug, the other, will be, the other will just be hanging there and, uh, and then place it in the bag. I don't know, I guess uh, if I'm, uh, worried about gas where this ends up uh, but anyways that was the instruction is to put that back in the bag and uh, put on mask breathe in covering the canister uh, inlet okay to check the seal if the seal's okay breathe out and shout out the command uh, given uh, so you're, you're basically going to shout out gas 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 again or spray 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 and eyes may be opened and normal breathing continued once a good seal is achieved and gas on the inside of the mask has been blown out. And then uh, you put your uh, headdress back on and continue your duties. And so that was the instruction right out of my basic training notes that I took in that classroom many years ago. And so a bit of a long video, but I guess we covered a lot of stuff. And 
So again, I say thank you very much for watching and uh, we'll see you soon.